Hello, and welcome to another edition of Lost in Criterion. I'm one of your hosts, John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, with my co-host... I'm the Adam Glass. Pat, I love that you did that in a sort of NPR voice. And I You're think, welcome. I think we need... To... Today, <laughs> we're going to talk about... I, I can't think of any NPR comment. <laughs> That's okay. So Today, sorry. we're going to talk about Picnic at Hanging Rock. You don't listen to NPR anymore. You don't live in the U.S. You have an excuse. No, no. Picnic at Hanging Rock, uh, 1975 uh, mystery movie by Peter Weir. Uh, Peter Weir went on to direct a lot of movies uh, after he came to America, but including The Truman Show, which is a movie I very much like, and uh, some of Jim Carrey's best work. Um, but anyway, uh, so Peter Weir directed this based on a mystery novel written uh, in the 60s um, and ambiguously based on a true story, though uh, the author of the novel... Yeah, I was wondering about that, because it's all, like, it read like a true story kind of thing, yeah. but at the same time was like, mm, something's fishy yeah, here. Yeah, well, that's, that's always, that's always uh, the argument that comes up uh, with this movie, <laughs> is, is whether or not the, or when the novel switches, whether or not the novel is based on the true story. Um, and one big clue that it wasn't is that this takes place on a Saturday, and Valentine's Day 1900 was a Wednesday. Uh, oh. Other than that little critical research failure, um, it, <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty pretty big yeah. one. I think yeah. like it's not doesn't take people a long time to figure that yeah. one out. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the author actually of the novel always tried to be ambiguous about it. Whenever they were asked, he would avoid the question um, or or just not answer it directly. Uh, but it is it is created whole cloth. Well, not whole cloth. Uh, <laughs> The school is based on a school she went to, but not, you know, it wasn't quite so isolated. I think it was in Melbourne, Melbourne from what I read. I may be wrong on that. Um, and Yeah, like, I was wondering about that, because what a weird school. Like, to just be in the middle of it's, nowhere. It's just like this... Uh, like, who starts a, a, a boarding school in the middle of nowhere? It's, uh, it was madness. Like, And these people are, like, shipping their children from, like, Europe. Yeah. And it's like, What? To go to the middle of nowhere? <laughs> Are their children criminals? <laughs> well, it is Australia. Everyone there is criminals. Yeah, that was my that was the joke yeah. right there. I I, I, I apologize for explaining. I'm going the for joke. subtle NPR level humor right there now. There you go. We'll be NPR all around. Uh, speaking of which. introduction and that uh, musical introduction and uh we have yet to thank him on the podcast so oh, oh yeah because well you yeah. know what as a, we'll explain i'll say that i'll why. say that now but by the time i actually edit all these down i'll probably have edit, added a little end credit sequence um yeah well i would assume but uh anyway well we are totally talking shit. all right let's stop so. let's stop that and move on so let's talk picnic at picnic hanging, at rock. hanging rock who the hell takes a picnic at hanging rock hey listen what kind of lunatic? Hanging Rock is a beautiful volcanic outcropping <laughs> of rocks. That natural phenomenon. Yeah. And then I was really good. Man, I was kind of zoning out, okay? I'm not going to lie. Um, how old is the is Hanging Rock? Because I feel like that one uh, teacher who went with them said like 14 dates. Uh, she... she was like, it's a million years old. And then I was like, 350 million. <laughs> I was not paying attention. Well, um, I was doing the laundry. She was, I'm not going to lie. The, the fella the fella driving the cart said it was thousands. He thinks it's like a thousand thousands, years old. Yeah, thousands, thousands of years, of years, years old. old. Um, and uh, and she corrected him to a more, uh, a more uh, geologically sound number of millions. And then and they just kind of kept adding on to that. <laughs> Right, and that was like, but yeah. The good thing is, is I will admit that she, at least as a teacher, was totally believable. Yeah. Just this sort of like off in a daydream, yeah. like mind drifting away on the topic. Mm. Yeah, she was. But then apparently she was running around in her pants. So listen, she disappeared for that, and so she less got her just rewards or something. Well, I guess no. Oh, yeah, but somebody still saw her. 
Ah, uh, what a I scandal! I know, right? Um. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, so the movie. This is this is a weird movie. Um, it is a very weird movie. Movie. One I because famously, and and we'll get this out of the way. Famously, there's no conclusion. <laughs> the mystery remains yeah, well, unsolved, which is very upsetting. It's to I think most viewers. I think to a lot of viewers, it was it wasn't necessarily to me. Um, I th- that's because you're broken. I am yeah. broken. No, I'm a I'm a writer. I'm not okay. I'm broken, but I'm <laughs> yeah, right. They, they, we, I'm, those, I'm confused. Those aren't usually mean the same thing, yes, right? Those, those are synonyms, those, aren't they? Those are the same. Thing. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, addicted. Uh, well, like I I understand the the appeal of an unfinished story, yeah. but I don't <clears throat> understand the appeal of this unfinished well, story. Well, here's the thing, and let me. Okay, okay, no, you finish, ahead. you finish. Sorry. No, I, because the way the story is built kind of as a true story, real life doesn't unfold like a regular story, right? Not often. And so this kind of didn't, it meandered. Yeah. I felt like I was not, I felt like I was like wandering aimlessly through this story. Well, think, and then suddenly it just stops. I think this is, and goes to this is more of a story. Uh, this movie is more of a movie about moods than, than mm. anything. It starts out very dreamlike and. Oh God, the music. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say that I really, really hated the music? <laughs> no, I, in general, I like the film. Okay. Yeah. But the music was the worst choice of music ever. It was so generic all the way through. Yeah, yeah. Like, everything felt like like one of my students at school would have picked the music for this. Like, no, <laughs> we should use classical music. I've got this awesome CD called 100 Greatest Classical Hits. We'll put that in. Let's use that. Let's put it on random. It'll be great. Yeah, right? And it'll all fit. It'll be fine. Yeah. It's just like, it was just really, like, super generic classical music. It was like... It was worse than picking John Williams to score your thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. No, because it's like, you know what we're going to use? We're going to use Mozart. I think the music the music worked mood-wise. And like like I was saying, this is kind of more a movie about mood. It's it's more atmosphere than substance, really, unfortunately. Mm. But, uh, but, but to get back to what I was about to say, the original novel, uh, the story goes, and I don't necessarily know that this is true, um, the story goes that when the writer submitted it to her publisher, uh, she had one final chapter that flashed back to the beginning of the Hanging Rock portion of the book um, and followed the three girls as they wander off. <clears throat> and it very blatantly laid out a supernatural cause to the the whole mystery. Um, mm. And the... I can see that. Yeah. And, you know, there's 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 hints of that. And that's... that's I'll, I'll get more into that in a second. Um, because that's one of my problems with the movie. <laughs> but... Uh, Wait, um, any movie that hints at supernatural causes? Without actually going full into it, yes. But, yeah. anyway. Um, <clears throat> so it did... It apparently originally went uh, whole hog uh, on that. And, and he said... The publisher dropped that last chapter. You'll have a great mystery on your hands. We'll do it. And then it was released later, separately, uh, called the, the Secret at Hanging Rock, I think, or the Secret of Hanging Rock, like a, you know, a decade later, after this movie came out. In fact, because I think it wasn't released until the mid '80s, um, so two decades later. Anyway, um, so yeah, like I said, that that. Ex- made a more explicit ending. And I don't think that's necessarily... I, I don't know. It's, it's That doesn't sound like a good thing to yeah. me, personally. But, like, I felt like the movie... I don't know. I guess unfinished stories in movies are more upsetting than unfinished stories in books, to me. Okay. Just because a writer can... I, I guess it's more how they don't finish it, right? Yeah. Like, a writer, and even in a movie, can build up to the fact that you're not going to find the answer. Yeah. And kind of, like, let the audience know that maybe this is going to be an unsolved mystery. But I really felt like in this book, it's like, or in this movie, sorry, not, not this book. It's just like, I'm watching, I'm watching, and then, huh, wait, huh, wait, when did we go into narration? Wait, it, it, wait it's finished? Oh, now we'll just stop talking about it. 
Yeah, and then here's some classical music. <laughs> yeah. Then I found on my CD. Uh, but, like, no, it just was that... It's not the unfinished thing. Like, there's plenty of great movies with that don't finish their story. Yeah. It's just the way he, the film does it is just really upsetting. And if that was the goal, congratulations, I guess. Well, I think I think one of the most upsetting, one of the reasons it feels upsetting is that uh, it doesn't commit to any. It's um. I was going to say, it's, it's kind of like Prometheus. It, throw, it throws out a lot of ideas and doesn't <laughs> settle on any of them. Every, every podcast is about yeah. Prometheus. Yeah, well, you know, everything's about Prometheus. It's the entire history of, of cinema is just leading up to or feeding off of Ridley Scott's Prometheus. No, um, no one, of the, one of the problems I had with that narratively, and one of the problems I have with this narratively, is there's a lot of suggestions about what might be going on. And there's a lot of right. good evidence for whatever you think might be going on. But there's enough but evidence for nowhere. other theories and enough evidence to contradict any of those theories. Well, I don't find that a bad thing in a film. Well, there's... Like those kind of films that are art built to make arguments yeah. between friends. I'm good with that. Yeah. My problem is, is that this one even sort of goes a little bit light on the evidence. Mm-hmm. So there's not really enough evidence to support any of your arguments. <laughs> yes. You're all just flapping your gums. Yeah, yeah. About what happened because there's no information in this film. Exactly. We don't. We see them like, wander. That's off. what makes the supernatural thing so upsetting. Is is like it's like, man, we wonder what made these people disappear. Supernatural. Like it seems like. Yeah. Even that as an explanation is totally a cop out. Yeah. Like I couldn't think of an ending. Well. One of the uh, one of the essays that came with the Criterion stuff um, compares it to Nathaniel Hawthorne. <laughs> it's a man shouting bullshit for a half an hour. <laughs> no, it uh, it compares it to Nathaniel Hawthorne. They sort of uh, you know writing supernatural stories set in your local setting as as a creation of local mythology. Um, okay, and and trying to do that for you know, Hanging Rock for for that area of Australia. Uh, in the same way that Hawthorne did it for New England, um, which is a little yeah, but New England is way cooler. <laughs> okay, first off, let's not go down that argument. Which which <laughs> area of the Earth is cooler? <laughs> it's cooler than what other? But, uh, but I think saying. I think more of the problem with that is that Hawthorne uh, is almost always it, well, no. he's very explicit in what's going on. Always. If it's supernatural, it's supernatural. If it's not, it's not. And there may be hints, one way or the other, that take you down the false road. But he resolves them. <laughs> uh, whereas this, the lack of resolution is a bit of a problem here because there's so much that it could be. Right, right, yeah. Like, it's not... Yeah, to me, it really does come down to the fact that, like, at the end of the film, nobody knows anything. Yeah. And every... No one in the audience, no matter how intelligent the, <laughs> intelligent the audience is, nobody knows shit. Yeah. They all walk away going, hmm, wonder what happened. Yes. They don't walk away going, I think it was this, I think it was that, which I think is a sign of a good film that does this kind of thing. Yeah. They all go walk away going, hmm, so, the girls are gone, huh? Oops. Yeah, I guess that's a problem. Yeah. And then they, and also I would like to point out that the narrator uses the way or the word spasmodically, <laughs> which is does, awesome. I forgot about that. Yeah, like I was expecting, like it was one of the, that was one of the most jolting scenes in the film. That narration when he said spasmodically instead of sporadically, <laughs> I I had to sit down. Did you swoon? I was like, huh? Did you swoon, Pat? A little bit <gasps> because it was so unexpected. Oh mama. I was like, wait, what? I mean, it's yes, it's a word, but not a word. Not really. People don't say it. <laughs> Barely a word. Well, I mean, it, it, it adheres to the rules of English grammar, <laughs> so therefore, it is a word. He said it. He said it. It's a word. That's <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, in the great scheme of things, it's entered the the, the human subconscious. It's a word now, whether it was before. Um, so, I want to talk about something about what I have discovered from my viewing of two. Count them two. Australian films. Okay. Okay. Three if you count Mad Max. This, this, um, uh, Walkabout and Mad Max. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, are all Australian films about the tension between Europeans and their new home? Um, maybe. Because uh, in... right now the evidence is telling me yes. yes. Well, in a way, in a way, this and and Walkabout have a similar. Certainly, a similar. They're actually very that. similar yeah. films, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, they are surprisingly similar. Yeah, um, the, the main topic. I mean, sure, yeah, it is almost identical to me. Well, Man Against Nature goes back as you know one of the one of the. I know, but this is very much schools. Man Against Australia. Yeah, <laughs> specifically rather than nature. Well, it's like Aust- Man versus Australia is a continent, continent. actively <laughs> trying to kill anyone living on it. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's be no, certain. It's the most hostile place ever. Have you ever seen a platypus? They have stingers. They have stingers that can kill a man. They lay eggs. They lay eggs, and sake. they have they stingers have that can bills. kill a man. They, you know, a koala will eviscerate you in a second. <laughs> Uh, there are trees yeah. in Australia that, to spread their 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 cone and coniferous trees, and to spread their seed, the cones literally explode, and just yeah, sounds about the, right. <laughs> the seeds fly. More, and, more spider poisonous <laughs> spiders per capita than anywhere else on Earth. More more poisonous snakes. <laughs> there's 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 a place. even the bunny rabbits are dangerous there. <laughs> it's because they're so plentiful. They're just rabbits right, right. everywhere. They'll just, they'll just eat your face right off. <laughs> there is, they don't care. There is a spot in Australia that is a an underground coal fire that has been burning since before recorded history. The first mm. people showed up and it was already on fire. Australia actively tries to kill you. If you want a man right, versus nature like, story a... where nature will win, of course, hands down... It's Australia. <laughs> right, but does that make for a good story? No, not always. Oh, um, this place is going to kick your ass. <laughs> yes. Why are we even recording it then? <laughs> well. Like, no, I mean, I it just, I was like watching it and I was like, did they make the same movie again? Well, you know, obviously uh-huh. it does different things with that theme, but, but that theme is underlying Yeah, that. but they're really similar. Yeah. <laughs> like that theme well, when I... is real strong. I mean, I would say that Walkabout for that theme is better. Yeah. It's a better film. Well, Walkabout also Certainly doesn't suggest... tells you things. Walkabout suggests that, you know, the natives have an inlet, but not that it's necessarily a supernatural one. Um, yeah. Whereas, whereas in this movie, the, the, the Australia versus the Europeans, the Australia is itself supernatural. Um, mm. And I, I guess I also have just a general problem with supernatural films maybe, as well. Maybe, maybe. Especially when they're very not obvious about the fact that it's supernatural yeah like it's so beautiful and so magical and then you know okay so the nitty-gritty of the film i i, I forget most of everything that happened frankly <laughs> you I watched it six hours ago come. didn't you no two days okay, okay um but no i had a hard time concentrating on it because of the way the story moved yeah yeah I found it very boring it's yeah it's it's ethereal to the point of boringness at times. It's, it is, it is. And I kind of wonder, like, they talk in the, I was reading the Wikipedia article about, like, a yeah. guy stood up and threw his coffee cup at the screen <laughs> because it didn't end. And I, well, I was like, yeah, you're right, dude. You should do that. You should do um, that. But the other thing I was thinking is, like, how did he even make it that far? Yeah. Yeah. Every time I thought about it, like, I could not imagine watching this in theater. I would get up and leave. Yeah. It, well, it's, it starts off. You know, this dreamy, everybody in white, except for Sarah, the orphan, because why should the orphan wear white? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, She's probably a whore. Yeah. No, but every, oh, yes. that's certainly how the headmistress treats her, always. Oh, um, man. That, yeah. What a woman. So it's all this that dreaminess, happens. and everyone's in love with each other, and with the, with the teacher, and everybody. Oh. Yeah, it's very idyllic, and. And even the, and the music, my God. Yeah, and we start I'm off. I'm never going to get over that, man. That music yeah. is just so like it. It, I, it's, it fits it's thematically. So generic. It's just very generic. It fits it, thematically. Yeah, it's in like the same way that like it's like they yeah, took I the movie know. and put it into that Microsoft program that writes music to the words that you're saying. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Here, come up with here are the themes. Uh, apply. Uh, no, but it starts off with with a quote from Poe: "What we see and what was seen is but a dream, a dream within a dream." Um, and one of the one of the one of the first lines of dialogue is one of the girls quoting that just kind of out of the blue. She like 
turns the camera and delivers that. <laughs> yeah, people kind of do that yeah. in this film a little bit. There's a lot of projecting. <laughs> but, uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's the main the main girl of the group. I can't remember her name, but she's, she's, oh, I, I, she's the know, one everyone's in those, love with. All those blonde white girls look yes. the same to me. I know, right? Especially no, when it was actually all... a really big problem in this film. Yeah. I was like, no, it really is. You? It really is a problem in the movie. There's no diff- like, differentiation in any of them. It's really upsetting. Except for the, the fact... that girl with glasses is different. Yeah. Everybody's in love with her, and that's how you tell the difference, because everyone's swooning whenever she's talking. Uh, there's the fat girl. And then there's Sarah, who's wearing gray, and those are the uh, those are the only differences between characters that I can remember. Yeah, yeah, Sarah and the fat girl are the only two characters I can actually <laughs> yes. differentiate. Yeah, and I only remember I mean, obviously there's the men. I only remember the Sarah's name because she was there longer. <laughs> yeah, and like they say her name yes. frequently, very frequently. I think Miranda was the was the blonde girl we're talking about I don't now. Know. What we see is what we see. One who says that, uh, sure. and then they, you know it's all this dreaming us. And they're handing out, they're handing out valentines and all giggly because they're it's an all girls school and they're handing out valentines and it has as much meaning as handing them out in elementary school. Um, hey, that was very meaningful. I'm sorry that everyone loved you so much and it confused you. Yeah, it was very confusing. <laughs> all of those, all of those, all those Batman valentines. Yes. <laughs> Batman, uh, Muppet Babies. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember anything else that was popular when I was at Spider-Man. So, yeah. I got lots of Spider-Man. Um, so, yeah, the point is, is yeah, it's very idyllic. Yeah. Then they go get in that carriage to yeah. go out there. It's very hot. That's our theme for the second, <laughs> for the second movement. <laughs> it's, hot. It's, it's hot. And they're allowed to take off their gloves after they go through town because we don't want the men of town seeing them without their gloves Man, because then I they will all just get turned on. I, yeah, yeah. Because um, I was like, that must be a big deal. And then I was like, oh, nope. It's a, it's a very Edwardian thing. It's, you know, it's it's why we call, uh, it's why we call ch- chicken breasts white meat and chicken legs yeah, dark meat. It's why, it's, it's why tablecloths exist so we don't have to see table legs. Um, it's Victorian over overhangs it's yeah but yeah you know don't want to see uh that's why there's so much underwear that's when that's why when when we see them in their pants they're still big puffy pants that are that's less they revealing no than, shape to them yeah yes, less revealing on multiple levels than anything anything i could walk out my door and see right now certainly more certainly much less revealing than what i'm wearing right now which is nothing i am not naked all right. I don't want to suggest that. I don't want to deny that, and I don't want to say it. Wait, no. That <laughs> wait, was the... wait, what? <laughs> um, no, so I did just roll out that. But, yeah. but I've, I've been walking around my house, and we have we have other people here. I'm, I'm clothed. All right. But luckily, they're all nudists too. <laughs> yes. See, wait, I like no. how this movie is kind of so boring. We can't stay <laughs> on the topic of this movie. It's That's... really like <clears throat> I'm not gonna say bad. No. It's just not super interesting. Yeah. There's, it really doesn't do a lot to encourage an audience to view. pay attention. Yeah, yeah. It's like I really found myself zoning out and like yeah. thinking about other things and like the oh, mystery. Maybe I should check my email. And I'm like, well, wait, wait. The movie's still playing. The mystery here is not engaging enough to stay no, interesting, not... and the well, fact and, that and it you remains don't get to know the girls in a way that makes you care if they're gone. Yeah, they disappear so fast. We know. They're, we know like, that. Oh, we know that everyone's girls. yeah. Everyone's in love with Miranda. And the others follow Miranda around, and she does this. It's it's you know there's a certain suggestion that Miranda knows she's going to disappear, because when they wander off, she turns and waves really dramatically, and she's got this. Yeah, whole... which you can use as like <laughs> argument for maybe they disappeared on purpose. But yeah, like you know, maybe they ran again. Away we don't have maybe... enough evidence to make any yeah. statement stick at all. Yeah. Much less have an argument about what actually happened. There's suggestion of maybe murder. There's suggestion of maybe a rock yeah. slide. There's there's all this. Yeah. You know. there, for a while, there's a suggestion of rape, but then was it Irma? Is there's yeah. definitely the doctor makes it clear to the police officer in a very Victorian way that she's not been touched. <laughs> yes, yes. I think he uses Everyone. the word intact. Yes, she's intact. Um, and then, but yeah, uh, so we have that. But then her corset's missing. Um, yeah, and it's, it's and so, then and then everyone says that's not important, and we just 
which is we we gloss over that because it's not important. Yeah, it was probably advanced alien uh, alien uh, civilization came abducted. They're them. like, who are these people in so much clothing? Why would it's hot? Why would you? It's wear It's very hot. Were they insane? <laughs> are they? Maybe that's their skin. Maybe they grow a really special fur coat. <laughs> Maybe. That's my guess. We need to experiment on them. Bring them. Yeah, up. find out how they do that. But not experiment too closely. We want them to remain intact. Yeah, right. (laughs) What's all this giggling they're doing? Um, No, it's just... Oh, yeah, man. This was slow. (coughs) Okay. And then, like, (coughs) they kill off Sarah, and it's kind of like... I I know I just jumped to the end of the movie, but, like... Well, that's because that's that's the next thing that happens. Yeah, right? And nothing (laughs) happens. We go hunting for the girls for, like, an hour with, like, a dude with a periscope, which is awesome. (laughs) The most useless thing to ever have. What's he using it for? He's just looking at the side of the rock from, like, a foot above his head. Yeah, I thought maybe... Has no meaning. I thought maybe... He's standing on a rock. Maybe there was some telescopic element to it, but then we get, like, a view of it, and it really (laughs) isn't. It's exactly what he sees. It's just... It's just him. He might as well have a stepladder for what he's doing with the yeah, a, right. A stepladder and cups here. over his eyes. Because, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> because all he, he's tunneling his vision to yeah, what he so would view good. if he were two feet taller. That's and like yeah, I understand that people disappear in the Australian wilderness. I understand that's yeah. actually very easy to do. Yes, but they didn't disappear in the Australian wilderness. They disappeared in a very specific location on top of a rock. Right. On top of a rock, surrounded by other people, which makes the entire thing stupid. Yes, well, that's and that's... basically impossible. Okay, so the secret, the secret of Hanging Rock, the the reveal, the supernatural reveal, is that they get they up turn there, into trees. and the three of them are in this trance sort of thing, and then uh, there's this crack in a rock, a sort of portal. Uh, the suggestion being it's some sort of portal in time and space, or who knows what? Right. <clears throat> um, so now they're in the year twenty twenty five. Yeah, and the they're still alive. They're looking at it, and a woman runs up, and it's the it's the teacher, but it doesn't even explicitly say it's the teacher. Um, and and I guess you know I didn't read it myself. I just I read about it, and the uh, you know the way she's described, it's like the girls don't even recognize her, and she just runs straight. Well, it's because she was in her pants. Yes, because she she had taken off her dress, and that was the only identifying thing they had. Right. And she everybody runs, wears a name tag on their dress. Yes, she runs right into the portal, and then the rest of them follow her, and that's 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 it. That's... So you're telling me that the answer to the book <coughs> is still more bullshit non answer. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It's even worse, you know. And there's there's Google Google picnic and hanging rock solutions, and you will you will find so many people. Who have devoted Wasted blog space to to suggesting you know arguing their view you know it was a rock there, slide but because again, of this. There's no information. That, no, that's it the is problem. so. There's so any much argument is irrelevant because yeah. you lack any evidence to make any argument. Exactly, exactly. You know, uh, the only suggestion that it might be a rock slide is that uh, it's on a mountain. It's on a mountain. Well, Edna or whatever the uh, the fat girl. Um, I, feel, mm. I feel really bad calling her the fat girl, but that is literally the only identifier you yeah. have. Well, she's got glasses. Yeah, but everybody's I've been calling her the glasses. fat girl with glasses. <laughs> yeah, but there's no other fat girl. It's... Yeah, I know, but it just seems nicer <laughs> if I give her two identifiers. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it, was it Edna? I don't, yeah, I don't remember her name. I, I, but, anyway. but our audience won't remember their names either, so yeah. let's just refer to them by their identifying characteristics. <laughs> yes. Anyway, she, uh, the, the loans... Not the lone survivor, because we do find the other one later. But the one who didn't go. Uh, when she's talking about how it seemed like they were in a trance, because she woke up and they were walking away. And they didn't have shoes. That's her evidence that they were in the trance. They didn't have shoes on. Right. Um, it's not, not not the fact that it's like 105 <laughs> degrees. Yes. Uh, so they, reason to take off they wander off. And then she says she saw something about it. She saw a cloud. You know, and that, uh, a, a cloud... Uh, coming up, which suggests you know dust settling from a rock slide, but even then, you, you the search party would have found or evidence a of a portal. rock slide. Um, you know, it could have been a magic cloud. It could have been um, like the cloud, like the fog. Maybe, maybe alien, maybe uh, not alien. Maybe ghost pirates killed them. That's right. A, um, that's a possibility. It's um, a possibility. Well, with this movie, yeah, it really is. <laughs> it really is. So Why much. not ghost pirates? Why not? 
You know, this this is yeah, a movie. No. It's like uh, it's like Cabin in the Woods. They it literally could be anything, and whatever it is is completely arbitrary. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm definitely going. I'm sticking with the dude who threw his coffee cup at the screen. <laughs> In maybe, maybe that's. But what I don't think him. he really threw it because it didn't end. I think he threw it because basically, he was he was making a bold statement. This is maybe, bullshit. Maybe this is a meta movie, and the act of throwing the coffee cup at the screen is what killed the girls. I like that idea. That's a good theory. You should write a blog. <laughs> I am only not about that. I am not going to devote any of my time to explore <laughs> that idea. Trying to explain this film. <laughs> yes. It's no. I just. Oh man. Yeah. So the headmistress yeah, is is a jerk for no reason, but you get that you get that from adults in uh, the nineteen in films about about nineteen hundred schooling. Yes. Yeah, but like and that's always I find just such a cliched thing. Yeah. It's just too much. Like, well, like, you know, we get it a little bit, and we've gotten it in some of our other films. We get it in like four hundred blows a little bit, but that actually that yeah. school master is kind of sympathetic. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's just like. No, like, people aren't just, like, assholes for just asshole's sake. Well, okay, first off, well, they are, but Dickens, you know what I mean. Because Dickens firmly establishes that most people are, are jerks just to be jerks. Yeah, um, yeah, I understand. But you know what I mean. Like, this, yeah. that drives me nuts. When they, like, when they, it's such a flat character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and, we, and, you know, we don't feel anything for her other there than is, maybe a little bit of scorn. There is kind of a nice thing that the movie does with her in in her unraveling, you mm-hmm. know, in the wake of this situation. The we see her and she's drinking more throughout the movie. Her hair is unkempt more and more. Yeah, that's a nice little touch as she slowly yeah. falls apart. Her hair falls yeah, it's apart. A, it's a nice subtle thing um, in, in an incredibly subtle movie. A movie so subtle that I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm, kinda, <laughs> I'm not sure anything happened. I want to fall asleep just talking about it. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, her fall apart was nice. It was yeah. pretty well done, but unfortunately, like again, <clears throat> we don't care. Yeah, and, and I have the no fact... reason to care about this character falling yeah. apart. And and her falling apart also uh, coincides with her being meaner and meaner to Sarah. And then eventually, as far as I'm concerned, murdering Sarah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and there's like there's whether certain, or not she and that's pushed another, Sarah out the window or not, she murdered Sarah. Yeah, that's another ambiguity. You know, she goes up, she wants to visit Sarah before Sarah goes to sleep, and Sarah falls asleep with the light on, uh, and we see that, but we don't see her ever go up, and then the next time we see Sarah, she's dead. Yeah, having you which know, and, annoyed me, but is more the kind of mystery I can deal with. Yeah, it could, it could be because murder, it could be not, and it that's could be fine. murder or it could be suicide, but I can deal with either. Yeah, but at especially, the same time, regardless, the headmistress is still a bad person. Yeah, you know, whatever whatever it was, she was either driven to suicide or, or actively murdered by the headmistress, who then commits right. suicide herself, um, mm. we find out in the end narration. Yeah, <sighs> which, why didn't we see that? Like, I don't... Why in the film where you ended the film? Yeah, why Like, why, why did we to... need an end narration? Like, an end narration almost seems like, oh, man, we're totally out of filming budget. Here are some <laughs> stills and some voices. Yes, yes. Aww. And then some really boring music. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah, there's... De- unfortunately, this is one of those films where there's not a lot to say, in my opinion. No, o- Obviously, really there's a lot of blog people who feel that there is. Yeah. But in the but, end, no. There yeah, isn't. the only thing you can... Uh, the only way to dramatically talk about this movie is to argue about what happened. And what happened doesn't matter because the movie's not even concerned with what happened. What happened, yeah. Because it's well, concerned like, with, mean, with can... establishing a mystery about what happened. The the yeah. very act of them disappearing is a MacGuffin, and it's not a MacGuffin that leads to anything. Yeah, exactly. It's it's <laughs> just, here's something to mess with you for a little bit, and then yeah. but you don't care because you didn't get to know any of these people anyway. Um, yeah. And then, like, also, we kind of, like, I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, the film is beautiful. I mean, yeah. it's an attractive film. Yeah. Um, it and, looks like, nice. the, the positive reviews say a lot of things about that. But it's like, that doesn't make up for the fact that there's not really a film here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a lot of flat characters. And I, I, I assume that the novel, being a longer piece, 
fleshed out. It has more. more. Yeah, is yeah. I would assume so too. I would assume that the because yeah. they felt that the novel needed to be made into a film, and, and because it is a piece of written work, that yeah. the characters are deeper, more interesting. Yeah. You become there's more a, invested in them before they disappear. There's a lot of sexual ambiguities in the movie that uh, might <clears throat> you could explore more in a book than yeah. than in a movie, even even in the seventies. Um, in know. the 70s in Australia, where apparently, yeah. oh, well, as we learned from I, Walkabout, anything goes. There's no more rules. Yeah. Um, no, but, uh, you know, Sarah Sarah very clearly has you know feelings for Miranda, whether or not those are, you know, were fr- very deep friendship or, or whatever, you know, but, but Miranda still kind of acknowledges them like, like it's, you know, a very straightforward crush. Um, well, you know what ha- you know. They say that, like, you know, what happens yeah. in Australian middle of nowhere boarding school stays <laughs> yeah. in Australian middle of nowhere boarding school. I think that's pretty pretty true for any boarding school, actually. But uh, <laughs> no, and then uh, you know the two guys, the two young men, they're they're spending a lot of time together and very. Oh yeah, totally gay. No, yeah, you know, it it it, it, it could be fleshed out more. Um, oh, and I'm sure in the book there is more. And I'm, I'm sure, sure that, there's more information. Yeah. Um. I'm not suggesting that they they were out there to have sex with each other, but it's 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 a deeper friendship. <laughs> that should be what people argue about on their blogs. It's like, why were those two guys in the woods already? You know? Yeah. What were they doing? Because uh, you could also argue that they're out there to check out the girls. And yeah, and, and, and very clearly they kind of are. Yeah. So though, it's who knows. Though the, but uh, then again, yeah. yeah. Welcome to another mystery of this film. Yeah. What the hell the are one... those two boys doing in the middle of nowhere? The one's very repressed about his his feelings for the girls, and the other's very straightforward. And and and, he, and they do call each other on that. He said he says, "Oh yeah, I I say those thoughts. You just <laughs> I say it. You just think it." Is basically what he says. So mm. you know, it's it's yeah, it's just everything's flat in this movie. Yeah, Even it's, the story, a, it's a film. It, things happen. So it of. exists. It looks nice while it yeah. exists. Yeah, you know, the music um, kind of ruins the visuals for me. Yeah, but like I said, it's oh, all yeah. it's all atmosphere and no substance for me. Yeah, like about the only character that I feel anything for at all is Sarah. So in my mind, this is basically just the story yeah. that leads up to Sarah's suicide and our murder. Yeah, yeah. and we it's, don't it's even two get hour, it's like two hours of how Sarah ended up dying. Yeah, and it's still even all of Sarah's combined screen time. Is you know like maybe fifteen minutes. I know she's just the only sympathetic yeah. character. It's uh, and we get and she's only the only sympathetic character because every time we see her, it's you know it's Miranda's, you know, uh, scorning her love interests. It's the headmistress, and then the rest of the time it's the headmistress torturing her. Yeah, right. And she's sympathetic for all the wrong reasons. She's sympathetic yeah. be- not because she's a well built character, but because human beings. At least for yeah. me personally, I'm naturally sympathetic to people being yeah. tortured for no reason. Yeah, we are we are empathetic toward torture, you know. Yeah. The whole and yeah, and to a certain extent, at least in the first scene with her and the headmistress, it's it's it fits kind of the whole the whole idea, the boarding school thing, you know. Hmm. Not the fact that she doesn't get to go to the picnic just because she's adopted, but <laughs> yeah, right, right. You're, you're you're not a real boy or sorry, a real you're, girl. You're a ward, so you have to stay here and share with me a poem that you haven't actually memorized. So you're going to try and tell me one that you wrote instead. <laughs> you know, she could be a more sympathetic teacher at that point, but she's still, you know, Sarah's there to learn a specific thing that she hasn't learned. So that right, and like I buy. Well, well you didn't do yeah. your assignment. You know, yeah. I mean, when students later, when later when the headmistress ties her to a wall with leather Not straps, yeah. that's no, that's no longer acceptable. No longer yeah, teaching idea. practices. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Even, if you did that in your classes, oh, um, it'd be totally fine. But this is Japan. <laughs> it's Japan. Yeah, I guess that's true. Children are being tied to various things at all, all basically at all times. Mostly, mostly giant robots or giant yeah. monsters. Yeah, pretty much. Shinto shrines. Yeah. It's, various things. Whatever. You know, fox gods, things like that. Ah, <laughs> uh, fox gods. So, yeah. So, we've got about ten minutes more to talk about this film. <laughs> I know, right? What are we going to talk um, about, Adam? I, I really... Listen, it's, man. I like how their ballet practice apparently takes place in a barn. <laughs> yes. 
I'm not sure that yes. the faci- I'm not sure that the parents, the PTA, is aware of the facilities that their money is providing. Also, are there only like 15 kids in this school? Uh, Worst boarding seems, school ever. It seems like maybe maybe 20 at the most. Um, like like the head ma- mistress is like crossing the names off. She's like, oh well, I'm screwed. Three kids dropped out. I'm done. I'm like, what? Well, she this really is, might be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This Pat. is a pretty ridiculous operation. It's a boarding school in the middle of nowhere, Australia. Do you think she really has a lot of people interested? But then I'm why does she this operation 25. exist? Because I don't she wants understand. It it's her dream, Pat. Because it you is, can't have picnic at a hanging rock if you're 500 miles is, away from picnic. It is there, the from hanging rock. It is the headmistress's dream to have a boarding school where no one will bother her. And she can tie orphans to walls. And, and and take her children to dangerous locations and yeah. let them disappear yeah. into magical rifts. On on the condition that they write an essay about it when they get back. <laughs> I like the <laughs> idea that they, she still made them all write an essay. In my head. <laughs> hey, that's the assignment, all right? Yeah, Tell, right. you got to do it, man. This is a school, your, okay? Uh, your three friends and your teacher who disappeared. Yeah, and I you like know, how... There's only like four teachers in the whole place, too. Yeah. And one of them is just apparently there to teach ballet and be French. Um, I like the fact that one of the classes is advanced. I think it was advanced needlework. Yes. And I was like, this is, oh, I know that that's a thing. It still made me happy. It's advanced being pregnant and barefoot in the kitchen. Yeah, right? It's, yeah. You have to be very good at this. What was the, uh. The uh, the the barn, the barn uh-huh. that the ballet takes place in is like labeled the temple of, of athletics or something like that. Yeah, and then it's like all, the beans that they're doing, like living. what they're using to like do is just like appears to be like suspended, like yeah, it's just boards yokes. tied to the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, it's really you know it's it's actually that's that's an interesting concept because uh, you know outside of the movie world. Um, because if if the idea of the ballet uh, practice is to you know go straight up and down to have such control of your body that there's no horizontal uh, shifting, why would um, you use something suspended from the ceiling that sways well, that's, back and forth? Because then the teacher can see that's who needs. True. Yeah, but I've never seen that as a thing that you ever see no, when no, people always, are practicing ballet. Always it's against a mirror with a stationary pole so that you can, you know, that's our very... Well, I think that's the thing is, like, you, if you never have something to, like, use to balance yourself to learn, I think you would just basically always suck at it. Well, maybe this is the advanced class. Oh, okay, so this is is the advanced, like, go up and down. (laughs) Yes, the advanced, uh, I don't, I was going to say what that move is in ballet, but I don't have to. I don't know. Let's say pirouette, because that's the only one I know. (laughs) It's the only word we could... We can think of, and I'm it's sure probably, it's not right. No, I think that I think pirouettes the the spinning on the toes, but probably. Um, I don't know, and that's the point. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> actually, my favorite scene in the film, though, is what the one that takes place in the barn. So I, I'm sorry, Temple <laughs> of Athletics. Yes, when that one teacher hides behind the chair. Yes, favorite scene yes, in the movie. Be, so, so in that scene, just a little little context. Uh, they're practicing ballet, and and the uh, the nerdy teacher. Is, is teaching and the French teacher comes in um, and has the lone survivor who we have discovered later dehydrated and, and lying on the top of the mountain without her but corset. otherwise intact but, but otherwise intact it's important <laughs> Adam yes um, and she uh, she uh, walks in and you know everybody uh, said you have 10 minutes free to, to talk about her because she's back and everyone's excited and then no one talks to her for like 30, 30 seconds for a minute. They just continue their ballet. And then everything explodes. Uh, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Everybody yelling at her. And she's completely overwhelmed because, yeah, well, we could have seen that one coming, teacher. Yeah, um, you're not very bright, huh? Yeah. And then, you know, the, the other teacher, <laughs> as they all... Is hiding behind yeah. a chair. Descend, descend into this I madness. Love it. The other teacher's hiding behind a chair. Seat. And they, fi- they finally clear everybody out, and there's just this reveal of Sarah in the back of the room tied to the wall. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. It's such a ridiculous thing going on. It's very weird. It's very, very weird. Um, yeah, the whole like, film, yeah. Just, it's sad that that's my favorite scene. 
Um, because it's like one of the few times you see people really demonstrating emotion. Yeah. Like in a really, like really serious way. It's basically yeah, the only well, acting in the film for me. It's the one time where the emotion is completely justified. You know, it's it's where where everyone's motives are very clear. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, earlier earlier we do have one very emotional scene where the younger guy goes back out to the mountain to, to try true. and find that's everyone <laughs> because he's completely obsessed with Miranda or whatever. Um, again, that's not entirely clear. And then he, he goes mad spending the night on top of, which, you know, another suggestion of of the supernatural or just a suggestion that the Australian outback's a crazy place. Right, that people go mad in it when they are out yeah. there and alone unprepared. and unprepared. Yeah, and dehydrated because it's 112 degrees and sunny always. Yeah. Um, even at frickin' night. <laughs> even at night, it's 112 and sunny. Um, but yeah, so he spends the night. And maybe maybe it's, uh, maybe it's uh, you know, Lovecraftian. Maybe. Maybe it drives people mad, this rock. One of the, yeah, it's, it's the uh, Cthulhu the mountains is of hiding inside the, yeah. inside the uh, rift and driving people yeah. mad. Consumed, consumed the virgins and then uh, drove the, drove the young man mad. Yeah, I can, um, I can accept that. That's, uh, that's my theory now. And okay. maybe I will devote time to about that. <laughs> yeah, okay, about you do that. that. Let's, let's it's, waste some space on our blog with this, okay? Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's we could have dueling guys. theories about this for months because without any evidence, we can basically say anything we want. Yeah, we really, we really could. And that's, you know, we, we've, we've circled around that. That's the problem. We've hit on that. No, yeah, um, there's no circling. Yeah. We've said no it at like, least 20 times. But, you know, man, the, this is supposed to be an hour-long podcast. We're pretty close to it, so we had to do something with the time. I guess. I guess. But, yeah, that's, you know, that's so where we are. I, we, I mean, <laughs> it, we we talked about the cinematography. It's pretty. Yeah. But then again, it's a lovely kind film. of. The, but I also don't find pictures of Australia attractive. I find <laughs> them terrifying. Well, there is there is the point in the movie, and you know, obviously, Walkabout does this very, very much more explicitly, explicitly, and and to much greater effect of nature being out to get you in Australia. Um, you know, we have the scenes of the snakes and the ants, and, and that yeah, and it's know, really little intercuts. weird because I did not like Walkabout, but now I kind of do. Comparatively, yeah, it's just like wow, that's a much better film about yeah. Australia. Yeah, because of Walk of, because they're both you know at their hearts trying to hint at that uh, walk about much more explicitly and, and doing a generally really better explicit. job. Yeah, well, and, yeah and they, they do just well, and also yeah, more explicitly, but also just the way Walk About is shot and scored and everything tells yeah. you that this is a dangerous place. Yeah. it's going to kill yeah. you. Yeah, whereas, whereas this, yeah, this doesn't. This movie tries to be dreamy. Uh, and it tries to be dreamy as people descend into madness. Yeah, it seems like Australia it's a very is weird choice. almost equally like, likely, like, the headmistress is almost equally likely to murder you as Australia. Yeah. Which is not yeah. a good message in a movie about Australia is going to murder you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I think we've, that's uh, it. No, we've, that's we've it. run the that's course the on this thing. one. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm sorry yeah. that everybody had to listen this long to this. <laughs> because there was just not a lot to say. Listen, we... we I think we talked about your things. underwear at one point, Adam. <laughs> we did talk about, about the possibility of me being naked right now, and I'm not naked right now. Yeah, we talked I'm about wearing, NPR. I'm wearing just my pantaloons, and uh, my big my big fluffy pantaloons. <laughs> right, they're very fluffy, very white. Yes, it's true. You're very Virginal pure at heart. white. You're yeah. totally intact. Unlike Sarah. Unlike Sarah, my clothing is virginal. Yes. Um, all right. Okay, this is it. No, we're finished. No. Is, yeah. Join us next time. Adam, insert information here. <laughs> we are, uh, we'll be watching Fritz Lang's M, which is actually one of my favorite movies. Oh, I'm uh, very prior, excited. Prior to, to watching it for this, it was one of my favorite movies. So huh? I'll, be, I'll be excited to learn about your reactions okay. to a movie about a child murderer. Yeah, okay. I am too. All right. We'll talk to you next time. Talk to you next time. See ya.
You've been listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriteria at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriteria.com.